Hi Greedy 3 Dears, welcome to part three of the Prey Wicked build. Today I'm going to be painting Naru. I'll show you how I painted it, especially all those tricky parts and how did I get that dye on her uniform. Well, stay tuned and I'll show you. Don't forget to check out the other two videos and don't forget to subscribe. Now the models had quite an intensive paint and if you want to see how I do skin have a look at the video that I've done here one of my additional videos that tells you how I've done skin and that's exactly how I've done it here so I've placed a base layer of barbarian flesh three washes of red yellow and blue and then I've sealed it with a matte sealer and uh, that is the skin done so I haven't showed you all that but check my other videos to see how I do the skin now I'm going to take some of this leather brown and I'm going to turn this into a wash and I'm just just going to paste across the whole model just to bring the skin tone down a little bit from that quite pink look that it's got. I just want it to be a little bit darker to represent um, the, the colour of Naru's skin a little. So paint that on as a wash and then gently using a sponge, a damp sponge, just dab it off. Now important after you put the varnish on initially after your first process to let that varnish dry for at least 24 hours so it's nice and rock hard and it doesn't doesn't come off so once that's dry you can do the next process which is what we're doing now which is the skin flesh tones so that's that brown the leather brown well watered down just lathered right across the model and then wiped off using a wet sponge we're going to just add a little bit of red into the model now again we've already done a red wash i know but we're going to just exaggerate a few of the areas so cheeks for example some watery red on there using a cotton bud a bit of cotton or damp or a q-tip uh, just sponge it around and merge it in until it links in and do that again with the arms same thing again making sure that you merge it into the skin tone and also with the body as well we want to make sure that the skin looks the same right across the board and I've also done a hands that are holding the bow but I haven't caught that on video just add something to the skin and makes the skin look much more realistic I think you'll agree you can see that there I've took some leather brown onto a hard bristled toothbrush and uh, just watered it down very very slightly and now I'm going to sprinkle some brown across the face just to add some blemishes to her face and a few pits and marks and again I'm going to do the same to the rest of her skin that you can see so that's on the arms and across the chest and the shoulders there um, not too much just enough so that you can see now for the eyes I'm going to give her a layer of black on the whites of her eyes to start with as she has got black on the above and below her eyes so I'm going to put the layer of black in first on each side and once that black is in there I can add a layer of white which will give me an eyeliner effect above and below her eyes you don't have to do this but it makes it a little bit easier when you go in to do the white now for her lips I'm just mixed a little bit of skin tone a little bit of brown and a little bit of red and I'm just going to paint Naru's lips on there now I don't want it to look like a model they look quite pink there so I have just darkened them down just a little bit with a little bit of brown mixed in as well and I'm just going to add a few highlights to the lips there is going to be a little bit of a face paint on the lips so I'm not too fussed about this bit but I'm going to just make that look like there's some reflection there and that's what we've got so far black eyes are done the skin tones are where we want them to be and now it's a case of painting in the eyes it's not white I'm using it's blue a bluey grey white and I'm just going to paint the insides of the whites of her eyes leaving a black layer above and below the eyes as a kind of eyelinery kind of effect if you like great way of doing eyes on this size of model on larger models you don't really need to do this you've got more control but on a small model of this size the painting black first before the white that really helps you just shape the eye uh, and not get into those real small nooks and crannies that you need to get into and there we go there's the uh, the whiting Now, once that's done, I'm going to be popping in the pupils. I popped it back onto the model first to see which way she's looking. And I'm going to use a black to just paint the irises in. So I dotted the pupils where I think that she's going to be looking. And then I painted the irises around them. Now, Naru's eyes are very, very dark. So I didn't need to do anything else with the eyes once the irises were in, apart from a little dot of white. Uh, and that was her eyes done regarding the irises. The bottom of the eye in between the black eyeliner and the white of the eye, I've 
put a really thin uh, pink line which is the quite natural look for the eye I do this in all my models and you can check my how to do videos for that and I'm turning a tear ducts in here as well a little bit of pink on the inside of each of the eyes there and I think you'll agree they're starting to look really really nice eyebrows now quite dark hair obviously narrow so I'm using a fine brush with black and I'm just going to paint those eyebrows aren't following the uh, the shape that's in the model there thank you wicked doing the same for the other side as well and there we go so that's that's the face done all the base work of the face and for the hair again matte black small brush and I'm not going to show you the whole painting of the hair process I think you're going to get the picture I'm going to paint every little bit of her hair jet black as it is in the movie and there we go so there's the hair on there's the face done you can see that darkened complexion is kind of working lovely and now there's a reference picture for her um, sort of face paint I'm using the black that I use but I've watered it right down uh, and I'm just going to add it to the reference picture so right around her eyes there um, just under her eyes across her nose and uh, a little line that goes from the top right of her forehead down to the uh, left eye and I've added that in as well um, this was quite nerve-wracking once I'd done all that work on the face adding this in but I watered the black down and it, and it worked really really well I was pleased with it and a white line down the from the bottom lip down the chin in a vertical line and there you go there's all the face paints on again chuffed with how that's come out Using some of this skeleton bone for her costume, um, it's like a material, the whole thing she's wearing is virtually the same. So I'm going to use this skeleton bone right the way across now. That's far too clean looking and far too bright, so we're going to come back to that. But I'm just going to get it right across all of her uniform. Now, if you do like what you see today, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Every subscription to the channel really, really helps. And if you want to buy any of these paints or anything that you see me using, look in the description I am an Amazon affiliate and you can buy straight from there and a little bit comes back to the channel and helps me just supports me to buy a few more paints and keep these videos going but it doesn't cost you guys a penny more but I would really love it if you could subscribe that would really really be appreciated now we said we were going to come back to it and we're going to go on to some strong tone and uh, this is army painter washes and as you can see I'm just blathering it all across her uniform and this will age it up it will make it look like it's wrinkled it will make you look like there's black in the inner bits and I oh, just love washes it, done a, it does a great great job to age this this uniform up but if you remember her uniform has got a few colors in it so we're going to come back to that now a um, few bits and pieces just while that's drying I'm just going to do the leather brown on her arm here on the like straps around her hand but we spoke about the colour in her uniform she's got some blue dye so what I've done is I've took this chalk this is just chalk I think you might call it pastels as well in other parts of the world but I've scraped off the colour that I want which is like a bluey green colour and I'm taking a dry brush and that's important it's dry and I'm dabbing it on and that gives you that uh, that dyed colour, that dyed impression on a uniform. It's really good to do it this way if you need to do that. And uh, make sure once you've done this though, that's just chalk, you need to add a sealant on it. So use your varnish that you used, your matte varnish, when you did the first part of the skin tones um, to cover that over, to seal that in. Because if you don't, it's just going to wipe off. And that is how you do a dyed colour material on clothing really really good you can also use the, the black one to do uh, five o'clock shadows and stuff like that back to skeleton bone and these boots I've actually airbrushed brown dark brown and I'm using that skeleton bone to just highlight and dry brush across them to add a little bit more realism a little bit more uh, pizzazz to the boots I've done both boots exactly the same and for the bow, for the light wood on the bow, I've put yellow down first. You're thinking, why is he painting that yellow? So yellow and then using a brown wash, just brown paint watered down. And I'm going to paint that on there and that's going to give it a wooden look. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole, all the bits and pieces because they're self-explanatory. So I think we're going to go straight to the end products and have a look at the final painted narrow. <laughs> 